How can you reach influencers like Melinda Emerson, the small biz lady who has over 200,000 followers on Twitter? Get the inside scoop on today's Innovator interview on Lipstick Unplugged. Hey, so welcome to Lipstick Unplugged. This is your no-gloss business branding show that gives women the confidence, mentoring, and the resources that they need to change their lives and impact the world through entrepreneurship. So I'm your host, Dee Copeland Patience, and today I have Melinda Emerson, and you might know her as Small Biz Lady. She's like in the New York Times, she's doing some really big things, and she has 210,000 Twitter followers and is growing every day. So I really think you're going to love this interview because it's informative, it's inspiring, and she has some actions that you can take. There's five reasons why small businesses fail, and she outlined them. She also talked about how to handle tough days, like when you get rude comments online. We're growing our business, and there'll be someone in a forum or someone on our blog who just makes a rude comment. So how does she handle that, even at her level? And she also talked about the right way to get attention from influencers like her. She gets pitches all of the time. But how can you, as you're starting and growing your platform, reach up, and really get someone like her to take notice. You're going to love that part of the interview. So I will see you on the inside. All right, so I'm really excited because today I have Melinda Emerson. I've been stalking her for a while, like I know that you have. And the reason I wanted to bring her on the show is because she's a small business consultant, a speaker. She's the author of a really great book, Become Your Own Boss in 12 Months. She's ran her multimedia company for a long time now, and she specializes in helping startups uh, start and reinvent their businesses. And so I'm really excited to have you on the show, Melinda. Welcome. Oh, thank you so much, Dee. I'm so excited to be here with you. I was thinking before the show, I'm so nervous. <laughs> But the reason I really wanted to bring you on the show is because you have a goal that has apparently really hit the hearts of a lot of people. You want to end small business failure. And one of the things I noticed that a lot of women do, especially really successful women like you, Maura Forbes, J.J. Ramberg that I interviewed, is a lot of times you have that big why and you put it out there. And that was something that J.J., who's a good friend of yours, who's been on our show, mentioned in the interview, we've got to start starting with why. So I want to know, why is ending small business failure so important to you? Because I rarely hear a bad business idea, but I see poor business execution everywhere. It's like a plague in the street, like the flu going around. I mean, it's everywhere. Everybody has technical skills. Everybody's got good ideas. But if you don't focus on how you're going to run your business, you will ruin your credit. You will, you know, really put yourself in complete financial peril. So I've been an entrepreneur for 14 years. I've made every expensive mistake out there. And I'm trying to keep you and all of the people that follow me and read my information from making those same mistakes. And see, I really love your book. I know, I know people probably tell you that a lot, but what I really like, because I'm all about no gloss, and I talked about this because I had a business that failed, and now I'm taking it online, and I'm starting over with something that I'm even more passionate about. But one of the things that I noticed is that you have your, your, your 200,000 Twitter followers, and that didn't come just by accident. So I want to know, how did you... Where did you start? Because I've heard your story a little bit about how you started online, but what were the, some of those things that you had to overcome when you were growing that following for your business? Well, really, it's about being successful online is about having a specific point of view. It's also about having helpful, quality content and then being consistent with it. You know, I treat Twitter like a job. I show up every day on Twitter because it's my job to end small business failure. So that's what I do. So when you start to think about, um, you know, being successful with building a social media brand, you got to do a couple of things. Number one, I shared somebody else's helpful article every day for four months. I shared something personal about myself every day. You know, I have a seven-year-old son, so he gives me great material to share. You know, like I had to act like an ape to get Jojo to eat a banana this morning. You know, people, 
other people can laugh about that stuff because that's real, you know, racing to the daycare, trying not to be fined again. No, that is something that everybody who's been there, done that as a parent can relate to. And I also answered somebody's small business question every single day, Monday through Friday. I did take the weekends off and I actually kind of still do. You don't see me on Twitter a whole lot on the weekend. Mm -hmm. You see me Monday morning. You can set a watch to when you're going to see me Monday morning. And that's how I built a following of 210,000 followers. It's really about consistently showing up with helpful content. If you're interested in using social media, you need to be using what I call the help mantra. You need to be helping others first. You need to be engaging with people. Gone are the days of one-way communication. People want to know you care. People want to hear their own name. People want to be told thank you, right? And then the third thing you've got to do, you got to listen. You should not assume that you know the culture of each social media site. They're very different. You know, Facebook people do not want to be talked to like they're Twitter people, right? Because because they don't like that hashtag stuff that we do over there on Twitter. Lastly, you need to promote yourself with care. Nobody wants to hear, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. <laughs> Up. That's the quickest way to become a pariah is social media. What you want to do is attract your best target customer to you. And the best way to do that is by just giving them helpful information. Yeah. You you to do business with you. The only thing you want to talk about is availability and price because you want them to already know that you're the best solution to solve their problem. And if you use social media the right way, that's what will happen. That's awesome. And uh, so you wrote your book, The Social Media Ninja, and that book has a whole lot. How did you come up with something that's so massively like just the, the values just exuding it was that something that you just did over time or how did you really even come up with that I, I know how you come up with the title of the ninja but in terms of the book why did you decide to put it out there you well, you know why I try decided to put it out there really was because my fans, like people would get up on Twitter in a minute and be like, small biz lady, I want to know how to get started with social media. Do you have a book you could suggest? Do you have a, where should I go? To, I, I, and, I, and, and finally, one day somebody, I tweeted out, hey, does anybody have a great resource um, for, for social media for small business? And somebody tweeted back, why in the heck don't you have one? <laughs> and I was like, duh, you know <laughs> And so literally, I said, you know what? This is ridiculous. I'm the social media columnist for the New York Times. You know what I mean? Yeah, I should have a book out telling people how to use social media. And I didn't want to spend the time, the 18 months, to write a traditional book to come out in traditional book channel because the stuff changes so much. So I decided to develop an ebook, and it's how to become a social media ninja, 101 ways to dominate your competition online. And I did that because it's quick, it's dirty, it tells you exactly what to do. So you can't say, I mean, it probably gives you too much stuff to do. So it's like, it's literally 101 actionable things you can do right now to build your brand online. And Period. so, and I love it. It's awesome. And one of the things though, that I really wanted to cover up that I cover in the shows, I, I have not seen more about your childhood, like growing up, you know, I really love hearing what were you like this growing up? Yes. <laughs> No, I mean, you know what? I wanted to be a journalist since I was in eighth grade. And that's exactly what I am for the most important newspaper in the world. So I feel very fortunate that I had a dream and that I actually get to live my dream. But, but the other thing, too, is I think that my childhood, I grew up in suburban Pittsburgh. I am the oldest of four children. Uh, we are all type AA overachievers. One's a lawyer, one's a CPA, one's a, you know. I mean, so we're all, you know, quote unquote, got it going on, you know. But the, the thing that we are first is a family. And my father is deceased now, but he told me from the time I was a little girl that I could do anything. And I didn't realize until I became an adult that everybody didn't grow up like that. Everybody didn't have somebody cheering for them and rooting for them every single day. I mean, what my father taught me to be was fearless. Oh, and that's exactly what I am. And there are people who knew me as a child who would tell you that they are not at all surprised what I do today, right? So, I mean, I don't know. You had to ask other people, but... Um, I grew up in a very isolated area. Um, we were very few African Americans in our school district, in our school. Um, so that was very isolating. That was very difficult, very challenging. Um, 
but I also think it helped make me who I am today. So I believe that every kick is a boost, you know, and, uh, you know, I had a great childhood from there. I went on to Virginia tech. Once I graduated from Virginia tech, go Hokies. Right. I, uh, (laughs) went to uh, my very first job was back in Pittsburgh. I was a television producer at the beginning of my career. So I worked in television in Pittsburgh. Then I worked for the ABC and NBC affiliates in Pittsburgh, excuse me, in Philadelphia, where I live now. And then one day I decided to start my own company in 1999. I walked away from TV and started my own multimedia production company, Quintessence Multimedia, which I still have today, which has morphed into a very prominent social media marketing consulting firm. And we work with Fortune 500 companies that want to sell things to small business owners. So I'm very proud to have clients such as Xerox, Dell, um, FedEx, Verizon, Wells Fargo, you know, Pitney Bowes, on and on great companies, Walmart, you know, that we work with to help them reach their small business customers in an authentic way. Well, so tell me this, because we got to back up, because like this whole interview right now is like that pretty much you're awesome. I mean, we already know that, but we got to take some polish off of this. It's like, okay, because I know that you, you, you built your business over time. And I think people get that. They saw that this was not something that just happened. You built it, but there was something that kept you in the game, right? Because you talked about your dad taught you about fear and, and, and you definitely have that personality. But a lot of us, I'm an introvert. A lot of times I don't think I can do this. A lot of women in our audience, we don't think we can do it. How do you, what would you say to that woman? And how did you handle those moments where you thought maybe this isn't right and I should give up? Well, I think that all of us have what I call chicken little days, right? So, you know, there are, you know, when you wake up in the morning and your face hits the sun and you race for your goals each day, you are the chicken. But then there are days when the world knocks you down and you he'll know a lot more than you hear yes. And you want to go upstairs and get in your bed and pull the covers over your head and say, Lord, why did I quit my job? What am I doing? But the reality is, is that we all have those days. Let me tell you a little secret, D. I don't always feel like being your small biz lady, right? There are days when I wake up and I want to give somebody else the job of ending small business failure, right? But here's the thing. I start my day before my feet hit the floor in prayer Mm. and I get really centered and I pray for God to heal my heart. I pray for God to give me a forgiving spirit and I pray for all of the people important to me in my life. And then I get up and start my day and that helps me be centered. That helps me be no matter what crazy customers say to me or somebody bad about me on Twitter or somebody leave a nasty comment on my Ties blog that I try not to take personally, right? You know, I mean, I'm able to shake that stuff off because I'm focused on the goal. My mission, my calling is to end small business failure. I don't even know what I would do if I wasn't a small business lady, honestly. I mean, I I don't know, go get a job? I don't think so. I mean, just so I think that you have to get your own motivation. And one of the things that I use to motivate myself is music. I have a personal theme song, D. All right. Okay. So I hit my music. I got it on my iPod. I got it on my favorites on YouTube. I got it on CD in the car, right? So when I got to get on the phone and close a deal or have a difficult conversation with somebody, I hit my music, right? So I can get the zone. (laughs) What is your theme song? It's For the Love of Money by the OJs, right? (laughs) I hear my, my music. Me and Donald Trump apparently have the same theme song, right? So... I hit my music and I'll be like, that's right. For the love of money. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. And so I psych myself up and then I'm unstoppable after that. That's awesome. And that's what I tell women to aim for. She got to aim for unstoppable. That's amazing that you use that same term because otherwise you're going to let that fear hold you back. Yeah. And let me tell you something. All of us have fears. But you have to push yourself. You have to get outside of your box. You, If you really want this, I, I'm going to go to Debbie Allen right here. If you want fame, well, fame costs. And this is where you start paying. So let me tell you something. I blogged for 18 months before anybody paid any attention to me at all. And I did it 
three times a week and I wrote for other people's blogs and I did all this stuff for free. There were no checks coming here for that. But I kept on doing it because I knew that I had a mission. And I knew that if I did it long enough, they wouldn't be able to deny me. And now they can't because if you Google America's number one small business expert today on Google today, you will see whose face comes up. And that's what it was always about. It was I mean, fun. But I, what I want people to understand is that I'm just like them. I was somebody with a laptop, a fax machine, and a dream in the basement of my house. I took out a home equity loan and I paid off every bill I had. I brought in my kid brother so he could be my tenant and pay half of my mortgage. Because I was single when I first started my business. And oh, by the way, I'm single now. But that's another story. But the point is, is that I put myself in the best position I could to be successful. But the other thing I did too is I'm a voracious reader. I'm a student of other people's success. Let me tell you something. Success leaves clues everywhere. So if you want to be bigger, if you want to do more, you get yourself two or three role models that you can look at. And you figure out how to work their hustle so that you can work yours. Now what I want you to also understand though is that even if somebody else wanted to become a small biz lady right now, they couldn't do it exactly the way I did it. They would have to have a modification, right? Because I got too much of a running head start on them at this point. But just like the guy that created Crocs, he didn't create shoes. He created a more comfortable shoe. So you have to do what works best for you in your industry. But I promise you, you better be zigging while everybody else is zagging because nobody's looking for the Me Too vendor. Exactly. And amen to that. <laughs> and you know what I love about what you said? And you said it in, um, I believe it was a, a Black Enterprise interview. You were at the Black Enterprise Conference. And one of the things that you say is that people don't niche it down enough. They don't have a targeted message. You mentioned it earlier. You have a targeted message. So tell us then, how'd you do that? How'd you, how'd you start from, you know, I'm going online, I'm starting my business, but how do we get that targeted message that we're so passionate about? You've got to be able to really think about your business in terms of a mission. <coughs> like when you look at a company, let's just say Apple, they are mission driven. And that's the reason why it's so clear. And if you want to be part of their mission, you use their stuff, right? So I am the small biz lady. My mission is to end small business failure. And I don't ever waver from that. I don't get bright, shiny object syndrome. I'm not over here talking about what people on Wall Street could be doing. I'm not over here talking about how to get venture capital and angel investment because that's not my lane. My lane is how to start and grow a profitable and sustainable small business. And 95% of all small businesses in the world will never make over a million in revenue. So I am the queen of the 95 percenters, right? I mean, if you really think about it. So for me, I'm really clear. Now, it's not that I can't talk to the Wall Street people. It's not that I can't talk to the venture capital angel investors because I could. But... I don't think that's who needs my help the most. Wow. I, I don't think that's where I can have the biggest impact. And I can have the biggest impact on the lady who says, I bake great cakes. You know what I should do? I should start a bakery. I mean, look, I, that's the lady I can help. Because I might say, no, baby, you might not need to open a bakery. Let's regroup. Let's get you a plan so that you can plan for success. I mean, because the reality is this. There are five reasons why small businesses fail. And the number one reason is because people don't think about what their life is going to be like running their business. The number two reason is because people have no network to sell to. It is astonishing to me how often people with no friends will start a business. I mean, amazing. it's like, wow, really? Your business can only go as far as your arm can reach, okay? It's all about your network. Your network is your net worth when you start out in business. The third reason why small businesses fail is because people don't save enough money. So they got $5,000 and they're going to go quit their job and their mortgage is $3,000. It's like craziness. Like you need people with savings have options. You have got to be a frugal fashionista, right? 
you know, you don't need Prada, right? You can go up to Canal Street in New York, knock up. You know what I mean? So the thing is, is that you've got to start cutting back. Any way you work it, you should be saving 30 to 40% of every paycheck so that they can put themselves in a position to launch a business one day. Um, the fourth reason why small businesses fail, we've already discussed this, but people try to sell to anybody that they think has money as opposed to having a specific niche target customer. Who makes more money? Your primary care physician or your cardiologist? Cardiologist all day long. You got to figure out how to be the cardiologist for your industry. I'm a cardiologist. If you want to sell something to small business owners, or if you want to start a small business, I'm your cardiologist. And I'm real good at what I do. Matter of fact, I have so many recommendations on LinkedIn. I'm in all-star category in LinkedIn. <laughs> Top recommended people in LinkedIn of all the people that signed up for LinkedIn. So this is what I'm telling you. You got to be the cardiologist. And the fifth reason, and this is the deadliest reason, People don't manage their household with a budget, and then they don't manage their business with one. And businesses that aren't managed based on up-to-date financial information have no idea whether they're making money or not, and that doesn't make much sense. So you've got to get on top of your numbers so that you are not making emotional decisions. You are making financial ones. And I will have to say guilty as charged <laughs> on that last one. I'm so horrible with the budget, never really, quote, had to have one. But I, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm, I read your book. I'm, do, I'm trying to do it. I'm trying to do it. <laughs> Getting your sweater on. You turn in the air conditioner down. You, I mean, you do it all the stuff you need to do to save money. And that's really, really important because it gives you options. And so one of the things I want to cover uh, before we wrap up here, we talk about uh, your boot camp. There's a, a whole, well, I want to talk about what you're doing. We also talked before the show about your Google Hangout. You mentioned, and this is something critical, you're going to have dissenters, right? You're a small biz lady. People know you know what you're talking about. But then you get those comments and people just saying nasty stuff. What was, maybe tell us maybe an incident or a story of where it just kind of either hurt your feelings or bothered you. Someone said something online and, and it just kind of impacted you. And how would you handle that? Well, you have to realize that I'm attacked almost every week online. Like, I don't know if you know that. Like, no. Not on Twitter so much because, you know, I kind of rule Twitter. But, like, it, on my New York Times blog, oh, please, in a minute, somebody will leave a hateful comment. Like, oh, this is just a puff PR piece on some, You know what I mean? Just mean stuff, you know? And I'll be like, wow! You know, and, and honestly, the meanest people ever are the ones that comment on the New York Times stuff. <laughs> but... I mean, I read that stuff. And what, what people need to know is that I read everything. Like every comment, every email that is sent to me, every tweet, I, I read that stuff. I might not read it like the day they do it, but I absolutely, I take time to read that stuff. So I'll be like, wow. But what's interesting about me is that I don't believe in defending yourself online. Like if somebody says, you suck, you know what? That is your opinion. And the good thing about how influential my brand is, is that nine times out of 10, my fans will defend me before I have to say anything. Like one of my fans will check somebody. Like you let somebody come to Small Biz Chat, which I do every Wednesday night from 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern on Twitter. You let somebody come to Small Biz Chat and get out of order. I don't even have to say anything. The other Small Biz Chat people will be like, oh, you're confused. Like <laughs> that's not how this works here. You better pedal that someplace else. You know, so you it's really about really being clear about who you are and whose you are and why you're doing what you do. Because you're always gonna have detractors, you're always gonna have haters, and all of that is okay. You know, I think that's part of the process. And honestly, I think when somebody gives you a negative comment, honest feedback is a gift. So I'm always like, hey. Tell me if it's not working for you. If I can fix it, I'll fix it. But I don't engage crazy people ever. I mean, I just, I just don't, you know. <laughs> I think that's great. And, and, and certainly there are people who are trying to get my attention all the time. Um, you know, please follow me back, small biz lady. That's a guarantee that I won't follow you back, first of all, if you ever do that. Um, or small biz lady, check out this thing I'm doing. If I've never engaged with you, never talked to you, don't ask me to tweet something out to my 200,000 followers. Like, I, I'm not going to do that. 
because I don't know you. I don't know your brand. I don't know what you're selling. And if you've never bothered to engage with me, why would I? Why would I follow you? Why would I tweet retweet something for you? I don't know you. Wow. You know, reason why my brand works is because people trust me. They know I don't tweet no garbage, no junk. I only give out helpful information. And nine times out of ten, I give out helpful information that you haven't read anyplace else because we curate it on purpose. Well, then talk to us about, because it's really critical, right? Everyone wants your attention. So tell me then, how do you get, like, you and some of the, the really big players online, how do we tactfully get your attention and I know that you accept guest posts so how do we do that to really say all right small biz lady I got something for you you know I'm trying to grow something good here I always accept pitches all right so if you want to write a guest blog post for succeed as your own boss my blog all you have to do is send me an email with the title of what you want to write about and some links to some other stuff you've written I don't let people who've never written anything write for me um, but if you've written some great content and, or if you've got a great idea, what I hate is when people send me real general blog pitches, like don't send me how to use social media to grow your business. Cause I'm the expert at that, right? You better tell me how to leverage LinkedIn better for your small business. Now that's a blog post I'd be interested in posting on my blog, but, but the, you know, the five reasons why, uh, you know, under 30 CEOs succeed. That's a good one. Like the more specific, the better. If you send me something real general, I'm going to kick you to the curb. <laughs> so then let so me tell you one of the things I love, and, and I mentioned this on another interview that I did recently, is I'm all about the mentorship. Reach forward, reach back, you know, as you're climbing up. And I was actually a little bit surprised but elated that you said yes to this interview. You know, I'm starting my show. I know I started with my why. I told you what my why is. But in a way, I'm kind of afraid, but I want to ask, why then did someone, your 200,000 Twitter followers, I might have had 100 at the time. Why did you say yes? Because I try to always say yes. Because I know that you're just getting started. And three and a half, four years ago, I was just like you. So if I have time and I'm in town and I, you know, have room on my schedule, I will always do it. And I really try hard to say yes. I mean, you can imagine that I get a lot of requests to interview me a lot. So it is really important that I mean, this is my give back. You know, I certainly feel like my blog and my tweet chat, small biz chat are my mentorship program. I don't have the ability to mentor all the people that ask, but I do try to give people interviews, let people give people Q and A's, you know, let people repost stuff off of my blog. I, I really do try to help smaller brands because I just think that that's what, I'm supposed to do because there were people who did that for me. Wow, so. that's awesome. And I really definitely appreciate that. So to wrap up, I want to go for a little, I really want to give you as much time as you want. I want to talk about your boot camp. We got your, your books. I want to, you know, we, I have your social uh, media ninja book. So let's talk about your products um, and then how they can help us. Well, uh, first of all, my book, Become Your Own Boss in 12 Months, that's really, it starts there. If you are interested in developing a new marketing plan or really getting down to the nitty gritty from my book, you should grab my workbook. Are you ready to become your own boss? Because when you finish that, you'll have your answer and you'll have a great marketing plan. Um, I also have an audio CD, 10 Things You Must Never Forget in Business, which really is uh, that that refresher for for that existing business owner that might be stuck and wants to get unstuck you know we we offer that as well and then we have my mastermind group um, my six week program to become your own boss it starts february 12th i'm so excited about it and i really 
so often people ask me to coach and I can't coach each individual person that asks me, but three times a year I do try to offer my coaching mastermind program so that we can have a group coaching experience and I can try to help people, you know, get a little bit of me as they go out into this big wide old world of entrepreneurship. Great. And so, and you also mentioned um, uh, the Google Hangouts, right? Yes. Yeah, so I'm twice a month, I'm going to be doing live Google Hangouts with other experts who I respect, like my gurus, the people that I call when I have a question, right? So a lot of these people are people who may or may not be on social media, but they are people who I know are the uno nuno at what they do. So we interviewed Jill Conrath this week, who is my sales expert. This lady could sell ice to an Eskimo and she is amazing. And she talked to us about how to boost your sales in 2013. So I'm so excited. And next week, um, February 20th, we're going to be interviewing Danielle Jury. And she's going to be talking to us about your marketing mindset and how to make more money. So I'm so excited to talk to her because she's so smart and she's actually one of the people in my personal circle of friends as well as another expert. So I'm really excited to bring some people to you who I might not have them on my Twitter talk show, but I want you to hear their voice and hear their advice. So I'm so, so excited about that. Wow. That's going to be great. And so to end it up here, tell us about one of the things that I want all women to set as a bold goal for the next year. And that's something that's going to challenge you, put you on the edge of your seat. It's maybe a little fearful. So tell us about what your bold goal is and then tell us where we might best find you online. Well, certainly you can find me. Uh, well, well, my best bold goal is in 2013, you're going to see me on TV a lot more. So I'm so excited. Nothing I can talk about right now, but you will see the small biz lady on TV. Um, more in 2013. So I'm so excited about that. I'm also working on some licensing deals as well. So I'm really excited about the small biz lady stuff that's coming at you. And we're also working on book two. So book two is coming uh, by the end of this year. We'll have another book out too. So I'm really, really excited about all of those things. And if you want to follow me and all of my exploits, I am Melinda Emerson, small biz lady. You can connect to me on Twitter as Small Biz Lady. You can like my fan page, my Small Biz Lady fan page on Facebook. You can connect to me on LinkedIn. And by the way, I love to get recommendations from people who listen to my advice and actually use it to grow their business. You can also connect to me on Google Plus as Melinda Emerson. So, hey, I am reachable. I do not hide from people online. So if you're interested in talking with me and meeting with me, let me know because I'm always willing to help you as a resource to start and grow your profitable and sustainable small business. Always a professional, always awesome. And I'm so happy to have you on the show. So thank you. Oh, well, thank you, Dee. I appreciate the opportunity. That's it for today's Innovator interview. I hope you enjoyed the show. For more inspiring mentor interviews, the show notes, and your Rebel Action Worksheet, visit lipstickunplugged.com. <laughs>